unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 5. The Bible says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Somebody shout amen. amen. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest thou out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And when that was said, Jeremiah said, then said I, ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. But the Lord said unto him, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Jeremiah says, And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Somebody shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Jeremiah chapter 1 gives us a very defining moment of time in the life of this wonderful man called Jeremiah, a prophet and a son of God. But most importantly, there is something there that is so deep. And I believe God allows such things written in scripture to help us understand the way that we should go in this life of relationship with God. And indeed, like many people, by the time God gives Jeremiah this reality, Jeremiah had all manner of insufficiency. He was unskilled. He was un unqualified. He was unprepared. <laughs> he was young. When God was speaking to him, Jeremiah says, God, I am a child. I am a child. I cannot even speak the way I should. And like many things come sometimes in life. Some opportunities of the spirit find us so unprepared, unskilled, unequipped, ill-equipped, not ready. And sometimes God places a demand on your life. And you ask yourself, how am I going to do this? You're not the first one. There was a guy who went through exactly what you went through. God is not going to use you to your personal ability. That is a lie. When you look at yourself and you feel you can do something, that is the very reason why God will not use you for that particular thing. God wants to use you beyond your able. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we dare to ask or think according to the working power that works in us. God wants to do more than you could ever ask. Hallelujah. So get rid of your talent. I'm not saying it's wrong to have. I'm only saying he can do and wants to do and will do more than your talent. Somebody shout amen. Not all the best musicians made it in this world. Not all the best artists made it in this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not all the people on the top have everything in line. Not all the people up there have everything perfect. 
Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, I chose the best things of this world that I might shame the wise. The people you don't expect, the people you cannot, who are not anywhere near, those are the ones the Bible says he chose that he might ashamed the wise of this world. Why? Because when you have a wisdom, a sort of worldly wisdom, there's some that tells you, no, I think I'm here because of this. You get it? When you've studied well and you have enough books, some tells you, no, 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 I think I am successful because I did this degree, I did this master's, I did this doctorate, which are all okay. Hallelujah. But God does not begin working at your degree. He does not begin working on your master's. He doesn't, no, he begins from the end of your master's. He says, now, I want to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. Somebody shout amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, they are talking about me. That one I'm sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God brings a reality in Jeremiah 1, 5 that catches me. And I believe it will bless you. The fact that before even the man was, God knew him. God ordained him. God sanctified him. God gave him a name. The Bible says, I have called you by name. You understand? The man, before even his parents planned to meet, God already had an idea. The plan that he had for this man. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you think that you can live the Christian life by chance. And that some of you, the life you live is a life of fear. Because you're not sure whether the scales will fall against you or for you. Some of you don't carry the certainty in your heart that tomorrow is going to be better than today. And of course, it's what the world has given us. The world is living in fear. That is why men compete. And even in the name of competition would kill and destroy. Why? Because they think that the only way they can go up is that way. There is another way. Hallelujah. Christianity is not a life of competition. Why would you compete over what is already yours? Somebody shout hallelujah. Why would you compete over what is already yours? Christianity is a life of rest. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says that we which have believed have entered into rest. We have entered into rest. You go to your workplace like a rested man. You enter your business like a rested man. Yes, situations, circumstances might put pressure around that might cause you to make you feel restless and anxious. But the Bible says, be anxious about what? Nothing. Even when men are most anxious, you're not moved. You know who you are. You know who you've believed. You know who is working for you. You know who is working in you. You know where you're going. You know who started this work. And that he said he shall see it to accomplishment to the day of Christ. You know the author of your dream. You know the author of your creations. You know the author of your career. You know who started this thing. There's a rest that comes to you when you know who is in charge. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I know who is in charge. Say amen. So we see a man who is scared. Who weighs himself against sufficiency. Who weighs himself against all ability. And all he sees is that he's too young. He's unskilled. He's incapable. He cannot. It's not possible. And then God meets that same man. And God does not begin from the man's weakness and his inability. He begins from the man's story. He says, uh uh-uh. You're here worried about how young you are. Let's go back a bit. Before your mother and father thought that let us meet and make this fellow. He says, I knew you. Now, you're worried about 2019. When I planned for you. Before even Gregory invented the calendar. <laughs> Somebody shout glory. 
So when God sees this worried fellow looking at his inability, he says, uh uh-uh, maybe let me take you a bit back. So you know that this thing we are discussing is older than you. It's older than the thing you're dealing with. Are you hearing me? It's older than the disease that entered your body. It's older than the news that were written about you. It's older than the words that the radio said. It's older than the lecturer who marked you wrong and gave you a lesson. The thing I'm giving you is older than that. He said, even before the lecture, I thought to give you a zero. I had a plan for you. Bigger than the lecturer's mark. Even when the doctor said, we found this in your blood. I had a plan bigger. I knew it was coming. And I made provision for it. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to make you prosper and not to harm you, he says. They are not of evil, but of good. He says to give you an expected end. We have a certain expectation in our end. Somebody shout hallelujah. We don't walk like men without direction. Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Whoa, wait. Whoa, wait. The Bible says we look in the mirror. And we behold the glory of God. Our future is sure and steadfast. It's assured through the word. Somebody shout hallelujah. How can we fail? That is why even when it comes to naming, God named you before even your parents thought to name you. You have a name. Somebody shout amen. Naming, if you go back even in the Jewish culture, from time in memorial when God starts relating with man naming was one of the most divine most spiritual rites of passage for anybody that is why at the eighth day in Jewish culture they would give a name to a child and the number eight means new beginning in other words you've begun your journey for the purpose for which you came into this world. The beginning was not when the man was born. The beginning was when the man was named. Did you just hear what I just said? Because in the name is a character. In the name is a definition for the path of life of that thing. And the essence of that thing. When God created the world and created animals. The Bible says he brought them. To Adam, the first man. And the Bible says, and he was curious to see how or what Adam would call his animals. Why? Because he knew Adam would not coexist with something of whose essence he has not called. Of his character, he has not defined. He cannot relate or understand or connect to something which he has not named himself. Are you hearing me? So he puts all of these things in front of Adam. And the Bible says, and Adam called every living thing. He gave everything a name. And the Bible says, and everything was so and is so up to today. So the name, like I said, in its own self, defines the character, the nature, and the essence of that thing. God knew that man cannot relate with anything that is not named. He cannot relate with anything that is not named. That is why when manna falls in the, in the time of the children of Israel, the Bible says they called it manna. The Bible says, for they knew not what it was. And guess what? <laughs> it's so amazing that it was the only thing that could sustain them in the wilderness for 40 years. And the number four means trial. That means in the period of testation, They could only feed on what did not have a name because they did not know what it was called. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose plan was to take them to the promised land. The Bible says, manna ceased to fall the moment the children of Israel crossed into the what? The promised land. In the time of trial and testation, you all know that the reason why they are going through the 40 years instead of the 12 walk journey is because of the spirit of fear that is within them. 
Are you hearing me? The inability for them to believe God, to go through the Philistine. The Bible says, even though the way was shorter, but when God sees the fear in them, he said, uh -uh, let me lead you the longer way, the longer route. And they fed on what does not have a name. And that is why when Jesus comes, he says, uh uh, the thing Moses fed you with was not bread from heaven. He says, no, it wasn't the real thing. He said, I am the bread of life. Are you hearing me? The other thing, it didn't have a name. It didn't have a certain identity. You cannot live by it. Jesus says, now I, I, I. He says, I am now the name. He says, I am the bread of life. He says, any man that eateth of me, he shall not what? Hunger anymore. And Jesus now starts to define the identity of the name that should be carried in the promise. That is why I pity men which means because their ministry cannot have any identity. It cannot carry a name spiritually. Who has understood what I just said? There's a reason why they knew not what it was. God doesn't want to relate with you without bringing clarity in the affairs he relates with man. Even though he speaks in parables, to you it is given. He says to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Somebody shout amen. And that is why whatever would sustain men under trial would not have a name. Because God did not relate with a trial. He related with their destiny, the promised land. Somebody said amen. amen. And so the naming was key. And all creatures became so. That's why if you go back in biblical times, Old Testament dispensation, all through the Bible, you will see that God deliberately names people certain names that fulfill the destinies for which those names carry. Esther means the hidden one. She was the hidden wonder. The hidden redeemer of Israel because she was not the one to come face. She was not the first in rank, not the favored one. But God somehow got a hidden woman and put her on the front for the redemption of a nation. Delilah, the lady that brings trouble to Samson. She was the weak one, the feeble one. And indeed her spirit was corruptible enough to transact the life of a man of God for a simple payment. Nimrod, when, when the fall of man in, in the days of Noah uh, ensued and God drowned them in a flood, the scriptures tell us when the house of Noah now settles and now they start producing and leaving families again, it's through the lineage of a fellow called Nimrod that again demonic worship was what? Was established. But you see, it's darkness. Nimrod is darkness. He's a demonic name already. Somebody named it a child and they did not know that that was going to translate through the life of a man to destroy and bring back sin on earth. So names are important. That's why I always tell parents, pray about the names you give your children. Hallelujah. Pray about the names you give what? Your children. Pray about it. Don't just name your children dog names. I'm not going to mention any name. Are you hearing me? But there's a way you can't call a dog Grace. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. But then you see that God did not only give names, but he also spoke into the lives of these individuals the assignment and purpose for which they exist on the earth way before they even came to being in the flesh. Isaac, in Genesis chapter 17, verses 19, when God encounters Sarah, the Bible says, God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son. Now, he's speaking about the future of a man who probably in his day could even get worried. Are you hearing me? But before even the man is, God tells Abraham, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, 
And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Listen. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. Listen. Let that last line. And with his seed after him. And then Isaac gets a wife. And the woman tells Isaac, I'm barren. Yet the prophetic word God gave Abraham and Sarah concerning Isaac was that in the story of the prophetic voice on that boy's life, there was a certain seed after him. How can Isaac worry of the barrenness of his wife when God had spoken that there has to be a seed after him? Second, even tell him, huh? Ah. Somebody shout amen. He even defines the boy's assignment. He says, uh uh, with him, the reason why he has to come. There is a particular covenant that I have to establish with him. Isaac is not yet anywhere. He's not yet anywhere. They don't even know his name yet. But God has the name of the fellow and the assignment, the plan, the mandate for that guy on earth. If it was true for Isaac, it's true for you also. Somebody shout hallelujah. Solomon. God comes to, to David in 1 Chronicles chapter 22 verses 9. He says, Behold, a son shall be born to you. And he says, Who shall be a man of rest? Probably during that time, Bathsheba is looking at another man. Anyway, who shall be a man of rest? And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name, God is naming the fellow, shall be called Solomon and I will give him peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He's speaking of a man who is going to come who shall be a man of rest and what he shall do and the promise of the fulfillment in the generation of his children that through that fellow peace and quiet shall be the portion of the kingdom of Israel way before Solomon is born. Now you come to Solomon and tell him enemies are on the gate and Solomon loses peace and sleep that those enemies per adventure will consume him and destroy him and the history of Israel when God even before Solomon was born told the boy that you shall be a man of rest and I shall keep you your kingdom shall have quiet from all your enemies how would Solomon worry when he hears enemies at the border oh let me say it the other way around which kind of man would think to attack Solomon? Which kind of man would think that now let us set ourselves and fight and destroy? Which man in his mind, in his sin mind, in his sober understanding mind would think that he can attack a man who God promised quiet and peace all the days of his life? What would you be looking for? That's why I feel sorry for people who think they can fight you. What do they want? How? Where can they begin from? When somebody sets themselves against you, pray for them. Because how do you knock on the gate and seek to fight a man who God promised peace? Already even the sentence peace is on the man's gate. Are you hearing me? There are angels that are guarding the word of God to the fulfillment. That man does not need to raise a sword or a spear. Why? Because the word of God was ordained for his life way before. You thought to write, to talk, to abuse, to quarrel, to... Tell your neighbor I'm above that. I'm above that. I'm above that. I'm above that. Tell your neighbor I'm above that. Somebody shout amen. But here again the naming came with its assignment. We call him Noah. The Bible says, For he shall save us from the curse that shall befall the ground. And indeed, he saves them. He is called Moses. For he was drawn out of what? Water. Praise God. But you see, this name existed even way before his parents thought. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because his name was stuck to his destiny. Ask your neighbor, what is your name? 1 Kings chapter 13 verses 1. The Bible says, There came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel. He came to the altar of Bethel. Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. 
And then the man of God cried against the altar by the word of the Lord. And he says, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by name. And on you shall he offer the priests of the high places with burnt incense on you and men's bones shall be burned on you. He's going on an altar. He's praying and by the spirit he's telling the altar, look, in the time to come through the lineage of David, there's going to be a guy called Josiah. When that fellow comes, he shall burn incense on you. He shall offer sacrifices on you. He shall relate for man on behalf of God on you. When he comes and you recognize him, remember how to treat him. This is a man's destiny. Sealed. And his name given. Even before man and woman think to meet for this man. Ask your neighbor what is your name? And what is your assignment? Luke chapter 1 verses 13. When the angel of the Lord comes into the household of Zacharias. The angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name what? John. And thou shalt have joy, uh, sorry, thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. This is a boy who's not yet born, but God is speaking. Praise God. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Listen. This was not a command to John the Baptist. This was the way John the Baptist had to go. Somebody shout hallelujah. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers to children. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people to prepare for the Lord. This is a man whose destiny has been clearly spelt out. A name given before he came into existence. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I called you by name. I sanctified you. Yes, you have your issues. Yes, they are there. But I sanctified you. I knew these issues would come. That is why I sanctified you. The sanctification I put on you, surely, will override and take over and go beyond the issues you're dealing with right now. See, when you understand these things, you stop worrying about your future. Some of you are waiting for a man of God to come and tell you your future. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> Some of us, our futures were spoken before men of God came. <laughs> uh oh, you didn't understand what I just said. Some of you, you're saying, man of God, tell me my future. What do you see? God is going to promote you next year. Amen. Listen, <laughs> some of us, before even those men were born, our destinies were sealed by Jehovah. <laughs> Glory! I'm not against the man of God speaking into your future. I speak in some people's future, but I confirm, I simply confirm what God already spoke. And even if I had not spoken, you had to be. Tell your neighbor, I had to be. Whether a prophet prophesies or not, I still had to. <laughs> Glory! My mother told me she was pregnant. And the Lord told her, This one shall be a man of God. <laughs> this one. And when he's born, call him Grace. My name was given before I came into this world. Now, a lot happened in the middle there. I fell sick, hit coma three times. But there was a chiward that existed before us even knit in my mother's womb. It could not let me die in 2000. 
it would not let me perish in 1999. It is that word that would see a car coming to crush me. And somehow the driver stops. Are you hearing me? And that car, oh, why? Because before you were formed in your mother's womb, he says, I knew you. I had to be here. Somebody shout hallelujah. I had to stand in front of you. I had to preach this word on this particular day. In this time of season. God knew that in part of your calendar. You had to be in Fanero. And every word you've been hearing through these seasons. He knew that was the word for you. Don't blame the one who didn't come. Don't judge the one who doesn't attend. Please don't put guns on the one you've pleaded with to come and they don't come. Keep doing you. There's a reason why you're listening to this particular message. I knew what you wanted. I knew what would stir you. I knew what would take you to your next level. I knew what would settle your marriage. I knew what would establish you. I knew what would fix your kids. I knew what would give you a womb. I knew it. Before you were formed. Tell your neighbor I had to be. With or without a prophet I had to be. Okay. I might say God is going to bless you. Wonderful. But even if I don't speak it. I'm not saying it's bad to confirm. I'm not saying that it's bad for me to confirm or any man to confirm or any prophet to confirm it on your life. Praise God that they've confirmed it. But even if we didn't, you had to be. You just had to be. You were the sperm that survived. <laughs> <laughs> the rest died. The millions died. <laughs> Glory! The millions died. Easy. Koraba katala bayekesekete. How can I fail? That is why he says, "For whom he foreknew, for whom he did foreknow, when he knew." You see, do you know there was a possibility of being alive in the days of Ezekiel? But God said, uh uh, you, you deserve after Christ. <laughs> there was a possibility of you existing in the days of Cain. There was a possibility of you existing in the days of Samuel when revelation was scarce and there was no open vision. But God said, uh uh, Lubega Grace. <laughs> Slap somebody and say, I had to be. I had to be glory to God. God knew. God knew. You had no purpose in the days of Ezekiel. Thank God for the men who served in Isaiah's day. But God knew you didn't deserve those days. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, and all of these having obtained promises receive not the promise God having something better in mind that their testimony would not be fulfilled besides ours meaning if you are living in the life after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ he knew you were the guy who can finish it he looked for somebody who could finish it <laughs> if he had called me in the days of Jeremiah, I would have been a waste. On this anointing, slap your neighbor. <laughs> Tell them I would have been wasted if I was called in Jeremiah's day. I would have been overqualified. Somebody shout amen. But he knew that you deserve the New Testament. He says, for whom he did foreknow. Listen, he also what? Predestinated. That means 
He has drawn your destiny. So, why are you scared? What are you scared about? What is making you lose peace? Chichi, landlord. Wait, landlord. You mean in your story, you were to die renting. You mean that in your story, you were to die an employee. mean in your story you are to die barren what what I'm sorry you failed in exams read harder next time but those are men rating you it has not changed how God rates you somebody shout amen. amen the Bible says he also predestinated listen that means he designed your destiny listen to be conformed the Greek word there is sumophosis. To be conformed. That means to be in likeness of form. With the image of his son. That means anybody who lives after the cross. When he looked at you he said. What destiny should I? Then he entered Christ. Looked at all the attributes of Jesus. And he says. Hmm, kind. He gave you kindness. Anointing. He gave you anointing. With wisdom, he gave you wisdom. Strength. Glory. Power. Can kongere kona kano. Mane. Sarabaka telepa. He said, he did predestinate to be sumo for cis. To be sumo force. To be conformed. To be in likeness and form. Let me explain what that means. You need to understand this. When he's talking about Jesus, the Bible says, for let this mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus. Let's go slowly here. He says, let this mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus. Full colon. Who being in the form of God? Now, this is the mind. Some people just go for the humility. No, don't lose this. He says, who being in the form of God thought it no robbery to be equal? What do you mean? Let me explain. The Greek word there for equal, the English spoiled it. So when you say equal, are you saying you're equal with God? Let me explain it. The Greek word there for equal is like in quality. That like him in quality, comma, and quantity. <laughs> now, I'm sorry if that offends you. If you feel it is robbery, God, they arrest you. But you see, he found it no robbery to be equal. That means in likeness, in quantity and quality with God. Fair dictionary. Quantity and quality. That means everything God is and has. This is love made perfect. That we might have confidence on that day. For as he is, so are we. Now some people say, ah, so that means you are also now, you are God. You are. Now, I understand what you're saying. They mean to think that we don't know the difference, that he is the head. And we are the body. No, we know. But we are still the body. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? When you slap my hand, I have the right to tell you, why have you slapped me? So, so, why dost thou persecutest me? He didn't say, why are you persecuting my people who I want to be like me, but they are not like me? No, he said, so, so, why dost thou persecutest me? Tell your neighbor, I'm one with God. I am one with God. As he is, so am I. Ha, 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 glory. I, I, some of you feel sorry 
they call themselves gods. Then Jesus came and said, ah, okay. Maybe you have a problem with them calling. Let me tell you. Ye are gods. And the scriptures cannot be broken. You break it. I am one with... Let me say. If the church awakens to this reality, you cannot die of a diagnosis. You can't. If you awaken to this reality, you cannot die because of a diagnosis. Because of what the doctor... You can't die because of what the doctor found in your body. If you awaken to this reality, you cannot fail in this world. How? You have diabetes. How do I have diabetes? One time I was watching a video about 10 years ago. It was of a man of God, David Oyedepo, in his Nigerian accent. He said, one time I went to the doctor. And the doctor told me that I have diabetes. He says, ha, ha, how can I have diabetes? Ha, ha, doctor, you're lying. And I walked out. I said, did you get it? The doctor told him you have diabetes. He says, I say to the doctor, how can I have diabetes? Ha, ha, ha. And I walked out. You know what that means? He laughed. It was so funny. It was so funny for him. I said, I love this guy already. Do you see how the man was thinking? He told the doctor, how can I have diabetes? Ha, ha, ha. He walked out. <laughs> Praise God. How can I be poor? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> how can my marriage fail? Ha, ha, ha. How can my ministry? Ha, ha. Let me give you 10 seconds to laugh. <laughs> Glory! The devil is a liar. Listen. He did that to conform you to the image. That means spiritually. When Satan meets you, he's like, Mama, Jesus, what do you want with me? The Bible says that he might be among the firstborn, among many brethren. And then he says, for now, for whom he did for now, because he knew you, he predestinates, then he called, then he justified. That means... <laughs> And after that justification, the Bible says, he glorified. Before your mother and father met, whether you are a, a case of wedlock, whether you are a case of out of wedlock, whether you are a case of rape, I don't know. But before it happened, you were glorified. Somebody shout hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1, last verse. The son of God, Jesus Christ, is prophesied of. He says there shall come a road out of the stem of Jesse. This is Jesus. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him quick of understanding in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his he's talking about I wish you know what was spoken of you do you know why I can't steal because in the prophetic word of my life it wasn't there any weakness you will ever see in your life you know that it's trying to come against the strength that was spoken on you. When Paul saw it, he says, when I'm weak, then I am strong. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Why? Because there is no way God would have foreknew you. And then he put a snare in front of you. It's not possible. He does not tempt, neither tempteth any man with evil. Somebody said amen. amen. Let's rush through this. <clears throat> the Bible says, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. I think you see how Jesus smites. 
Revelation. Praise God. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the God of his loins and faithfulness and God of his reins. If you jump to verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people. And it shall be the Gentile seek. And his rest shall be glorious. Now God is even saying, no, this one, even the Gentiles shall follow. Now Paul then quotes it in Romans and he says, oh, is this not spoken? That of this root of Jesse, the Gentiles shall seek and receive salvation. All of this was planned. Spoken before given a name. And it was to come in a virgin woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why he says, if you go back to Romans 8, 29, if you read it in the message, he says, God knew, listen, how he says it, what he was doing from the very beginning, he decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first in line of humanity, he restored we see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. After God made that decision of what his children should be like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. I love 31. 31 asks, so, what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? Ask your neighbor, how? So, if you came with any problem, how do you have a problem? How? Praise God. I have good news for you. I have good news for you. It is finished. <laughs> it is finished. Praise God. I don't care where and at what point you are in life. But I want to tell you that's not the last point. That is a temporary close. There is a bigger plan and it is permanent. It is fixed in the fashion and light of the glorious Christ. You will not fail. You will not lose. Not to disease. Not to poverty. Not to the world. You will not be ashamed. Believe God. Believe God. Why do we take time to preach to you these messages? Why has God called you to this wonderful fellowship? Because he knew what you needed. You know, sometimes I ask myself, and I want you to ask yourself this question as I ask it, because it's an open-ended question. Where would we have been if we did not know the things we know now. And I want you to go back to where you were before you knew these things. Some of you, the time you came, you were on a verge. They would have announced you dead any time. And you came and fell in life. Because as part of this plan, God could not let you perish. There was something that had to draw you here. Some of you, you even shocked you're here. Some of you, the way God has changed you. If they take us back three years and they look at that woman and this woman standing in this meeting this evening, if they did not believe God, it was enough to believe God. But why? Because he began that good work in your life. And he will see it to accomplishment to the day of Christ.
Somebody shout hallelujah. Now I want you to raise your voice, your hands in the air, and thank God like one who has a name with him and whose destiny is preserved and sealed in Christ. Come on, thank God. Thank you. Just take a minute and just thank him. Now in the thanking, mention every good thing that you know has to come your way. Mention it now. 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 Your father is hearing. Come on, thank him. Speak into your future right now. You're creating. There's a reason why you're praying the way you're praying. So it has been since then I've been my father's child when I received his son in me down at his feet is not where I am found to be but on the seat right by Side, but on the sea, right by side. I have tasted bread so sweet I can let go. Was an awful mess, now pure. There's a reason you are praying the prayers you're praying. They are different from your neighbor because you are unique and special in your own way and in the course you must go. Your destiny has been defined through Christ. So let us come to Him no matter who we are. The price is paid. The path is clear. Don't be afraid. His love has washed away your sin and made us all by His own. And let us all by His own. And it's not yet revealed. What we shall be in times to come, but what can be more glorious than to be we are God forever in His earth and to be called my Father's child and to be called. Child, I've tasted great, so sweet, so sweet I Father, we thank you. We receive your word tonight. And now I speak to your situations. Thank God he gave us a name. He said in the name of Jesus. If your name is not enough, I gave you a name. Because that name has a character. It has a quality. 
it has an essence he said at the sound of that name in the name of Jesus your sickness is healed in the name of Jesus your finances are fixed in the name of Jesus your ministry is going up your marriage is restored in the name of Jesus whatever was not working starts to work now in the name of Jesus your children are preserved in the name of Jesus you are a success in the name of Jesus your family is blessed in the name of Jesus your destiny is sure in the name of Jesus your posterity is preserved in the name of Jesus your story goes upward and upward only in the name of Jesus you shine bright and bright in the name of Jesus and you star your destiny is aligned in the name of Jesus the world responds to you in the name of Jesus there is greatness in you in the name of Jesus you cannot fail in the name of Jesus you cannot lose in the name of Jesus you are perfected in the name of Jesus that habit lifts you in the name of Jesus you are blessed in power authority influence and affluence in the name of Jesus doors open for you in the name of Jesus nations respond to you in the name of Jesus favor is with you in the name of Jesus you're going far you're going far you're going far you are the head and not the tail you are above and not beneath in the name of Jesus you're launching deeper and 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 deeper you're going higher and higher you're showing of wings like the spirit things are happening so quick and so fast for you the glory of God is on everything you touch as it comes out of you shout amen hey hey the world is in trouble I came the world is in trouble I made it here and I don't plan to live like this I'm gonna live in glory I'm gonna live with a bound I got a good name and I will leave a good name somebody shout hallelujah glory to God glory to God glory to God you can't be sick in this atmosphere if you're sick in your body just receive your healing I am sure people have been healed 100% sure if you're there and you said tonight apostle I want that Jesus I want to receive him as my Lord and Savior repeat these words after me say Lord Jesus I have heard the gospel today I make a decision to receive you I cannot do anything on my own I choose to give my life to you and confess with my mouth as my heart believes that you are Lord that you died and rose again for my sins from today your Lord and Savior in my life and today I receive a new name a new story I am born again my life is changed I plug into the purpose you ordained me for before I was formed Amen The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.